What's up, my alphas? Class is in session. Yeehaw! So today, we're talking about how long to walk. That's one of the most typical questions I get, talking about what I do with the hunting and gathering and how workouts fit into our old lifestyles of that. So you gotta think about it. That's what makes common sense because you don't really need the numbers, even though that's what typically Western people are used to and want. They want the exact number of calories to eat for this, that, and the other and crunch them down to everything, like it's a weight cut or something. But the truth is, you don't need to be exact. Your genes are made to be adaptable. So the basic foundations is what you gotta understand. So if you think about the hunter-gatherers, you think about how long they used to walk and be active, you could probably come up with some sort of guess. Now, some people might think and be way off, be like they just did it all day long, days and days, which is wrong most of the time, but sometimes it's actually true. If they're chasing a big animal like a giraffe or a bigger mammal, then yes, the hunt could take days and days of tracking and multiple battles until they finally kill whatever prey it is that's large and in charge. But if it's a typical hunt, the San Bushmen, for example, in Africa have been observed to be about eight hours in a day. So they get up about 6 a.m. and they go hunting to about 3 p.m. And that's the usual thing that anthropologists have observed. So eight hours. So eight hours equals the hunt. And it's a little less time than gathering, but not by much. When you factor that all together, this is basically like an eight hour work job. This also equals work. That eight hours is the same as doing our jobs today. It's like a work thing. And of course our jobs often go longer than that. And there's variation also in tribes. Some other tribes be hunting all day long, like 14 hours, 12 hours long, a little bit longer than this. But in general, around the six to nine hours is the average hunt for tribes. And so when you think about this, you gotta think about how long to walk. Well, you ain't gonna walk all this much. You just don't have that time in the modern day. So here's the trick, the thing that you have to know what your body's been evolved for, so to speak. So when we speak about evolution of the body and of working out, particularly of walking, there's different phases that your body burns calories and how it uses the muscles. In the beginning phases of working out and getting your body going, you're using anaerobic metabolism to break down glucose. So that's just in the first few seconds, but then it gets to aerobic capacity. And after that, that's when you really start to kickstart your system. You start not only burning glucose, carbohydrates through glycolysis, you're actually beginning to burn proteins and fats. So after about an hour and a half, you're entering gluconeogenesis. Sounds like a really cool anime or something, but really what it is, it's when your body starts getting glucose and energy to be able to get it from non-carbohydrate sources. So you start burning amino acids, you start burning proteins and fats. Think about it. After that hour, 30 minutes, your body's out of fuel and it's basically food that you've recently eaten. So it needs to start grabbing energy sources from somewhere else that starts getting from the fat deposits and proteins and all that. So that's when it's most effective when you're walking past an hour and a half or when your workouts are over an hour and a half. So now you know that everybody that's working out an hour isn't reaching this point of gluconeogenesis. And that's why when you see hunter-gatherer tribes, a lot of times very skinny, very in shape. They're like ripped toned bodybuilders, toned down a lot and slimmed down. But they have muscle, they have type one, type two muscle fibers, and they're just very athletic and strong and healthy, both physically and mentally. And that's just part of it. Our natural rhythm is to work out at least over an hour and a half. So you get to that point where you're burning the carbohydrates and then you go past that to the non-carbohydrate sources and that's when your body's really working. And as you just heard, hunter-gatherer tribes will be out there walking for hours and hours, not just over an hour and a half. So you can imagine why they're so skinny. They are burning sources. After about an hour and a half, they start burning the fats and proteins in the bodies that they don't need. So you might think and get scared and be like, gluconeogenesis, would I want to burn proteins in my body that I need? Well, yeah, you want to burn the proteins and fats in your bodies because you're going to be going for a long distance over an hour and a half and you need another energy source so you're not going to work out an eight hour session but definitely trying to go over one hour 30 minutes just walking and setting the foundation alone so everything else comes easy is the first step the foundation some people think 
is oftentimes not the most important part, but obviously the foundation, everything is laid on top of the foundation. And then working out, that foundation is walking. And so people get it confused, like, what about all that workout stuff, the bench press, the pull-ups, the squats? That's actually secondary to the foundation. Really, the workout is the foundation, which is walking. So make sure you get your walk on. Go over an hour, 30 minutes at least. I do several hours a day. I never really get to eight hours, but I have a few times. But in general, my workouts are walking long distance, over two miles per hour, not a walk in the park, a good pace. And you're burning calories really fast and getting your body in shape to what it was evolved to be. Any questions or comments, leave them below. Subscribe and like if you learned something in this video because you'll learn a lot more through evolution and evolution answers everything. I'll see you next time. The revolution evolution. Check it out.